All right, welcome back. I want to touch briefly here now on the VG diagram or the Venn diagram as some of you uh, may have heard it called. If you recall in our previous discussion we talked about the total lift equation, uh, the factors that we're concerned with as pilots, and then also uh, we touched on the coefficient of lift curve and the coefficient of drag curve. And once again, uh, why those are important in our understanding of how and why uh, we're trying to do the things that we're doing in recovering the airplane in an upset. And at APS Emergency Moon Maneuver Training, we're trying to give you some immediate and tangible skills in being able to recover an airplane in a, a wide variety and a comprehensive uh, set of scenarios that you can encounter in a fixed wing airplane. The academics that we go through, which are fairly rigorous, are designed to simply give you a foundation and understanding why we're doing what we're doing out in the aircraft, but it also is going to give you confidence as you go from aircraft to aircraft aircraft, you will have the foundation of which you understand how to recover that airplane because these tools and these techniques we're going to use are going to be applicable from aircraft to aircraft. Here we have the load factor over here, how many G's you're pulling in the aircraft. We have airspeed along the bottom. Now this dark blue area here represents, in, a, in essence, the flight envelope of the aircraft. Now this is probably some generic aircraft. We can see here that the load limit or design limit of this airplane is 3.8 G's, so it's a normal category airplane. This line represent right here is the boundary bet between normal flight and stalled flight. We can see that the 1 G stall speed of this airplane plane, 1G, uh, right here, the intersection of 1G with the line is at about 65 knots. So the 1G stall speed of this airplane is 65 knots. And we're going to assume that this is gross weight. If you think about it in the POH, when they publish the stall speed, it is just this airspeed. It's the 1G stall speed at gross weight. If we were to change the weight, and then of course this curve would shift as well. But we're going to assume a fixed weight here. Now notice that stall speed goes up in direct uh, proportion to the load. Or I should say it, stall speed goes up in direct proportion to the square root of the load. If your 1G stall speed is 65 knots, then you go out and pull 4G's, uh, you well, in effect, double your stall speed is about 130 knots. And that's for any fixed wing aircraft. You pull four G's in a fixed wing aircraft and you've doubled your stall speed. Now, by the same token, notice that as we decrease our G load, stall speed goes down. And this is also key for us in understanding, again, how to maneuver our airplane for recovery. If we are trying to recover out of stall region, uh, in understanding that uh, we need to manage our load factor. We don't typically have angle of attack indicators in the airplane and one of the ways that we can do that is managing load. And you can sense load most certainly as a pilot. You know when you're at 1G, you can certainly tell when you're at 2G's. You can certainly tell when you're at 0G's. All of these have direct impact on your angle of attack. When we affect our angle of attack, if you, as you recall from our uh, previous discussion, it determines where we are on that coefficient of lift curve, whether we're in stalled flight or non-stalled flight. These are simple and tools and uh, uh, understanding aerodynamic principles that we're going to delve into in greater detail which again is going to help us to understand why it is what we're doing in the airplane and how it relates to our aircraft's flight envelope. Most certainly we work hard as pilots to stay in the heart of the envelope but if we get to the edge or outside the flight envelope we must have some very efficient tools in which to get us back into the flight envelope uh, quickly. Uh, again, we'll go into greater detail uh, later in the, in the course, but I want you to understand that this is an important part of our training here at APS Emergency Maneuver Training, and it provides the foundation that you need as a professional pilot in understanding how to recover your airplane. More to follow.